Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video, we're going to have our second game dev vlog. So the first thing I was starting off here with the Pixar, yes, this is going to be an art video again, as promised in the title. We're going to get into a little bit of animation. But I figured with these vases I was creating, that they could use a little bit more intricate detail there. I do like the, uh, the blooming of the flowers, but I thought it needed that pattern, and it looks a little better with that. Okay, now here uh, is making a crate, which is surprisingly difficult. You're going to see me go through a lot of different iterations here. And uh, then even at that, I'm not, at the end, I'm not really satisfied yet. I'll have to figure out what I want to do with it exactly. Um, but in a typical crate, there is usually a plank of wood that goes uh, diagonally, right? Um, now, there might be other supporting pieces. I don't know if the X pattern is really that regular or anything and I think this illustrates one of the difficulties of actually doing pixel art which is although visually speaking it couldn't really get much simpler than this and you would think oh well if you need something that's going to be kind of diagonal just draw a diagonal line it doesn't actually work out so simply in the end because although it's a simple concept like there's only so many pixels in the item each little thing each line you draw matters that much more in the background you'll see some of the crates I'm using as a reference and you'll notice that they generally look a lot better and they're pretty close to a basic pixel art style maybe a little bit more intricate but the little things like a couple pixels here and there really seem to make all the difference obviously you can see that this has made a problem out of one of the simplest things ever it's like draw a box and make it the problem is it's not just draw a box anyone can draw a rectangle but it's how to make a rectangle actually look good so moving on from there one of the things i actually wanted to try doing today was to make some kind of character um, nothing special and a good chance nothing final or anything like that but just to get a little bit of practice so here i'm trying to go for a bear type character um, obviously it looks more like a mouse right now because the ears are really gigantic. For the eyes, just kind of that L shape, I think it's kind of an amusing way to design characters. One thing you'll probably notice is that I'm only working with one square right now. So the idea here was that it could actually be used as a pattern, like the one I have on my pillow, which is basically a fox face. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take this head as the starting point, and I'm just going to give it a pretty typical body that's two squares tall and one square wide. The reason for characters being two squares tall and one square wide, uh, pretty self-evident, is that most characters that stand on two legs tend to be taller than they are wider. I'm actually kind of surprised how well the lighter yellow just kind of filled in there, uh, because I didn't really feel like I needed to do anything else with it. So. Now I can move it over there as the head for an actual body. And contrary to what you may expect, drawing a stick figure doesn't actually appear to be that useful. So instead, I'm going to kind of use a more squarish body for the base of this uh, anthropomorphic bear. What you're going to see here is one of the tougher things to get down in art, which I don't really have a serious grasp on yet, which is um, to get character perspective right. So like if a character is looking one direction or standing a certain direction, how do you make everything else look like it's lining up properly? So if a character is facing the right, which um, I mean, clearly he's not. Clearly, this is supposed to be more of a front facing view then you would only see one arm and that would be on the middle of it because it would be the right arm from a right perspective. But I think where it gets a little tricky and I'm definitely gonna need more practice here with this is when something is slightly tilted because the character wasn't supposed to be purely front facing as you can tell by the face and it's also not supposed to be a shot from the right side where you would only see one leg or you would only see one arm which makes it a lot easier it's difficult when something's at like a 15 or 20 degree angle especially with pixel art anyway though to go back to the ears i had to actually look up what a bear looks like and it turns out bear ears are pretty round so th that looks more like a rabbit or a mouse still so i'm gonna shrink the ears and move them more inward and after futzing with it for a little bit, I don't think it's quite perfect, but I think it's a drastic improvement over the original uh, that you can still pretty much see on the left. 
Another one of the parts I found to be pretty tricky was what the hell to do with the chest. Um, obviously a bear has a lot of fur going on for it, but how do you illustrate that in a way that it looks something realistic? but in a pixel art style. Isn't that actually the, the whole essence of the problem? How do you make something look good or realistic while using the most simplistic tools ever, just having a, a single pixel, but not even a, being able to have a lot of pixels, just being able to have a few hundred to work with. So if I was serious about using this character in the game, and maybe I'll come back and work on it more later, I'd probably put more uh, time into that aspect. But what I wanted to uh, play around with here really was uh, having a idle animation or walk animation. Right here I was a bit confused about what I wanted, so I was going to go for a walk animation. And you can see why you need to have that side shot. You can't just take a, a front facing character and make it walk to the right normally. I re-realized that while I was working on it here, so that's why I just kind of changed it into a idle animation. So speaking of idle animations, if you look at most old school games or games that have that old school style, basically anything that's pixel art, the standard go-to uh, idle animation is where a good chunk of a character's body uh, will move up and down one pixel every few seconds so it's really subtle but it actually makes a big difference because if you think about how living creatures act even if they are standing still they will never really be standing perfectly still it, with the exception of maybe a spider that's stalking a prey or something like that but a standard dog or human or anything like that that's just kind of chill and standing there they, they're pretty much going to move around a little bit so in essence, and perhaps this is completely self-evident, but it's important to make sure that your characters don't look like just another object in the scene. And animation does go a long way in helping out with that. So right here, I'm bringing them onto their own separate sprite sheet. I think the way people normally do it is they will have literally one character and 10, 20 different poses in a single sprite sheet. So I'm probably not gonna have it be the NPCs one sprite sheet. I'm probably gonna eventually have it just be the humanoid bear figure sprite sheet. So we're going to import those two frames um, for the idle animation into the scene. And to do that first, I have to export it as a PNG, of course, so that we can import the image. And then we'll be able to slice it up. In case you're interested with the PNG sprite sheet, you have to set it to multiple 2D sprite texture mode. And then in the slice tool, you can specify how big your frames are. So here I'm saying that it's 64 pixels tall by 32 pixels wide because this is a two square character. So if you want to create an animation from your sprite images, you first select the images that are going to be included in the animation. Then you go to create and animation. You use the right click to get to that menu. So now that I have my character added to the scene, we can go ahead and test the animation. By the way, if you don't remember where all this previous setup is from, it's the 2D platformer controller video on Unity. So now that the character's animating after adjusting the speed, really the only thing that needs to be done, um, at least for this scene, is to give the character a 2D box collision, because obviously the box is passing right through it. So uh, for that, using the 2D platform controller. It requires the character to be on the obstacle layer and also to have a 2D box collider. So if you've never used Unity before, uh, box colliders are a really big deal. If you want things to not pass through the floor, then your um, obstacles are gonna need a box collider of some sort. So the character is animating and also collides with my box. So that's probably good for this video. FYI, when we start building the maps of this game, they're probably going to be top-down like Zelda, not front-facing 2D platformer like Cave Story. Uh, but until my future videos, I will see you guys then.